Hey guys, so I did a video on making the hairpins, which is just super simple wood turning 101. And I'm actually just getting started and getting ready to go over and start turning. And I thought, well, if I'm going to go over to the lathe, which is a little bit of a drive for me, I want to take enough stuff to make it worth going over there and work for a couple of hours at one time. I'm going to share with you guys a secret of woodworking. Did you know that wood comes from trees? Yeah. Those things growing out in your yard, they're made of wood. It's free when it comes out of your yard. We cut down a cherry tree in my yard, or an apple tree. Pear. This is from a pear tree that we cut down last year. Um, it had gotten infected with some mold, which creates beautiful spalding. So we're using me some beautiful spalded pieces, and I cut them up. I let them dry for a year, and I cut them up, and I covered the ends with sawdust. And they've been sitting on the back of my station, actually where the uh, chop saw was. I don't know if you could see them over the back right-hand corner. was uh, a stack of little log slices that I cut up at the beginning of summer. They've been sitting out here in the shop for about two months, cut up. And today I'm going to turn some of these so you guys can see it. Now... When I turn my chuck, and it's going to be all about how your chuck works and how your chuck is set up. I have an expanding chuck. I know that if I was a really cool woodworker and I was one of those tripped out geek woodworker people, I'd tell you the name of the chuck and the make and the model. And it was designed in Egypt on the 13th of the day. And, you know, it was, it was designed on a full moon so it would work better and it would all line up better. I don't care. It's a chuck that holds my wood in place, and I can do my job. So, there's two ends. One end here is cracked. I'm not going to make the prettiest base. The other end didn't crack. I'm going to use the not cracked end for my base. If I had to use a cracked end for my base, it really wouldn't matter. No one's really going to flip it over probably and look at it, but I have the option on this one. I'm going to assume that the center of the circle of the tree lint branch is the center of this piece. Does it matter? No, because I'm going to turn it on a lathe and it's going to be centered when I'm done roughing this in. It won't matter. I'm going to drill a hole in here. I'm going to show you my drill press and the bit that I'm using. I'm using a one inch Forstner bit. I'm going to assume you guys know what a Forstner bit is. Forstner bit is. If not, Google's your bestie. Go look it up. And I'm just going to sink this deeper, a little bit deeper than the thickness of the head of my Forstner bit. And that's going to give me something nice for that chuck to go in and expand in, but it's not going to be huge, because I want to be able to turn and shape this in some. I don't want to worry about hitting that hole that I'm going to drill. I only need a hole on one side, because like I said, the other side of my my uh, lathe has a point. And that point's going to come in and touch on this side, and the other end's going to expand in here. I'm holding my piece in place. So, let's drill it out. I'm not going to get fancy and do a jump shot here and make it look all cool like the YouTubers. I'm real basic here, guys. Where's my flip button? Where's my flip button? I don't have a flip button when I'm recording. So I am going to stop the video and restart. Okay, we're restarting here, guys. I'm just going to bring this down. I'm going to try and keep, even though my two ends aren't parallel, because I just lob these apart. Again, not rocket science. We're having fun. I'm going to try and keep this flat to the same top flat as my Forstner bit, so my hole is straight down in. I'm not in an angle, which is going to make it hard for me to work later. Turn it on. This doesn't matter. Get my hole. Yeah, I know. I skipped the drill bit around. But look, you really can't see it anymore. So, that's it, guys. I got a hole deep enough for me to reach it and grab this with. And that's what we're going to use. And we're going to go chuck this up. I'm probably going to cut a couple of these because these don't always turn out very well. I don't know if you can see when I was drilling, there was steam coming out of this hole. Which means the wood still has moisture in it. And a lot of wood turners will tell you if there's moisture in there, it's not dry enough to work with. Some people tell you that if there's moisture in there, it's going to warp and twist on you. The project I'm making, 
It shouldn't matter. And I only expect half of the pieces like this that I turn not to break, fall apart, or crack. I'm having fun. I'm not worried if half my pieces don't work. I still like making a mess. I know my setup's not the best here for shooting video on this, or for shooting the time lapse. But I want to show you what it looks like right now. We're ju I'm just shaping it, getting it set up. You can see the spalding coming down through here. You can see it coming back out over here. I do have a knot right there. It's going to give me some trouble. i got to take this little edge off. I'm going to try and leave some of that bark because I think it'll look cool. But we're going to turn this down thinner. We're going to dish this out, and I'm going to dish this out. That's plan A. We'll see how that actually comes out when we're done. I'm not dumb enough to hurt myself. It's cracked. It won't stay on. I've damaged the hole. It's all messed up in there. I can't even get a good grip on it now. So, uh, burn pile. We'll take two. Try it again. <laughs> 